ready to go. Yeah, that's a great idea.
Good afternoon, Penn Staters, and thank you for joining us. I'm Paul Clifford, CEO of the Penn State Alumni Association, and I'd like to welcome everybody to today's virtual speaker series. As always, this session is being recorded and streamed on Facebook Live. As many of us transition to living, working, and learning remotely, the Alumni Association is ensuring you stay connected to one another in the university and also stay informed. You can view a full listing of our online networking events, career programs, and webinars at alumni.psu.edu slash events. Today's event features Penn State's Vice President for Intercollegiate Athletics, Sandy Barber, who will talk through the days leading up to the cancellation of winter and spring sports and the work that students, coaches, and support teams are undertaking to keep prepping students for a lifetime of impact. She'll also celebrate those winter and spring seasons cut short and pay tribute to our 2020 senior class. Uh, Sandy will also stick around uh, at the end and answer a few questions. Uh, so you can type your questions using the Q&A function if you're watching on Zoom. And if you're viewing this on Facebook, you can leave your questions in the comments. We'll monitor those questions as they come in and get to as many as time allows. So now I'm help, happy to welcome the 2017 Under Armour Athletic Director of the Year, uh, Penn State's Vice President for Intercollegiate Athletics, Sandy Barber. We can, we will, we are. Thank you for joining us, Sandy. You got it, Paul. Thank you. I always appreciate your, uh, your kind introductions. Uh, and it's, uh, it's fun to be uh, interacting with our community again. Um, I wish I could give everybody a big hug and uh, uh, could see everybody's faces, but this is, uh, we're all learning uh, new technologies and, and new ways here, but uh, I really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a storyteller and, and love to, to tell the stories uh, a little bit about this time. So, so I'm actually going to do the most uh, uh, risky thing I'm going to do here um, and go to, uh, go to my, uh, my slide deck. Um, and it looks like it may be working here. All right. Uh, yeah. So uh, the we the we can we will we are. It's uh, kind of uh, Penn State athletics mantra uh, through through this time. And uh, I want to I want to take you through a little bit of kind of what our students are uh, are doing right now and 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 how they're doing and and also just a little bit of the the lead up and and how this all occurred and. You know, obviously, we're at a really difficult time um, in our country and, frankly, in our world. Uh, and sports is, is just a really, really small part of that, um, although it feels like a big part uh, of it to, to us and, and feels like a big part, certainly, to our students and, and all the things that, uh, that have happened to, to them. But I'm going um, to start with, uh, if I can get it to work here, um, yeah, and of course, that's not happening. Let's see. There we go. Um, and that's, uh, that's, you know, what you can, what, what can you count on from Penn State Athletics, whether it's this time or it's a, it's a different time. You know, I thought about there are a number of things that, that, uh, that Penn Staters can continue to count on uh, Penn State Intercollegiate Athletics for. And, and certainly one of those, Paul, you already mentioned it, and that's, you know, preparing our students for a lifetime of impact. That's what we continue to do it. We're doing it in different ways, uh, but, but we're continuing to focus on our students and continuing to prepare them for, for what's next. You know, certainly setting the standard for comprehensive excellence. I'm going to talk about the 1920 year really briefly, uh, but we continue to deliver across the board in those 31 programs. Um, we're always, again, we're having to do it in different ways, but we're always going to partner with the university on delivering um, the higher education mission of Penn State. We're going to engage our community in meaningful ways. That's obviously something that's, that's changed. We're doing it virtually now, much more of it, even more than we have been uh, on social media and through video and other ways and really appreciate our community interacting and engaging with us uh, in those ways. Um, and then we're always going to solve, uh, serve uh, as a positive and powerful uh, point of connection uh, for both our local and extended 
uh, alumni community. Uh, we have fewer tools uh, than, uh, than we've had uh, at other times right now, uh, but uh, I, I certainly hope that we're serving as a, a powerful and positive point of connection. Um, and then, of course, we're going to sustain and advance uh, that self-supporting business model. Uh, I think all good Penn Staters and all certainly athletics fans know that Penn State is one of, let's say, a dozen uh, intercollegiate athletic programs across the country that are self-sustaining uh, from a financial standpoint and uh, even through difficult times. Uh, uh, we will continue uh, continue to do that. So you know, here's here's this look at uh, kind of the the 1920 uh, um, athletic achievements. And as you look through this, you'll notice, I mean, all of these teams uh, that are ranked and the couple of Big Ten championships and the number of of NCAA qualifiers. I mean, we had at at, at some given point in time. 21 of our 31 programs that were ranked in their respective uh, top 25s. We had two Big Ten championships in women's soccer and, uh, and uh, ice hockey, uh, men's ice hockey, the regular season champions. Um, at the time that all everything was suspended, Penn State was ranked seventh in the Directors' Cup. Um, so, of course, you know, uh, football in this 11-2 uh, season uh, and uh, the, uh, the Cotton Bowl Championship, uh, just tremendous, a great way to, to end uh, 2019 on December 28th. Uh, we had cross-country finish at 18th at the NCAAs. Uh, volleyball finished tied for fifth nationally, losing to the eventual national champion Stanford. Uh, men's soccer uh, had its first appearance in the NCAAs since uh, 2014. Uh, double win total uh, from 2018 to finish 12-4-3 in 2019 in Coach Jeff Cook's uh, second year. Uh, they challenged for the Big Ten title right down uh, to the last day um, and, again, made that first appearance since uh, – since 2014. Uh, women's soccer captured the Big Ten title, finished ranked uh, 18th uh, in the country. Uh, and there are those smiling faces of, on, on that day. And then another set of smiling faces not too long uh, after, uh, not too long ago, actually, uh, where they got their championship ring. So I thought it would be th fun to, uh, to throw that one up. Um, and then as we head into the winter, uh, certainly we had a, a number of great performances, a number of things that really captured our community. Uh, men's basketball in that eight-game uh, Big Ten winning streak. Uh, they were uh, ranked for 10 weeks in the poll, rising as high as ninth. Uh, and, uh, and, of course, uh, as the season ended, um, as we were headed into the Big Ten tournament, I'll talk about that uh, in, in a minute, uh, but we had 21 uh, regular season game. So obviously quite a, quite a season for Coach Chambers uh, and, uh, and, and the guys. Um, fencing was ranked uh, at the time. Uh, they had just been to, uh, to the NCAA regionals. Uh, they had qualified uh, nine individuals for the NCAA championships. Uh, and the uh, men and women uh, were, uh, the men were ranked seventh uh, and the women were ranked sixth. And here are those, uh, those nine qualifiers that were headed to Detroit uh, for the NCAA championships before uh, before everything uh, got uh, got halted, um, uh, men's and women's gymnastics were uh, were both ranked with the uh, the men sixth and the women twenty uh, third. The women were going to be hosting the NCAA regionals uh, would have been uh, two weeks two weekends ago, uh, I believe. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, Guy Gadowski and, uh, and hockey and the, the Pagula crew, Pagula Ice Arena crew, uh, were the Big Ten champions. They were uh, set to host uh, the Big Ten um, uh, tournament uh, and uh, when everything got, uh, got stopped. Uh, so there's uh, – whoops. Uh, so – and then we had the indoor track uh, where our women were ranked 14th. They actually were – we're on the verge of, uh, of NCAAs. Um, uh, Stephen Nederoski uh, was uh, one of our uh, most highly decorated uh, gymnasts uh, uh, on his way to the Olympics, uh, uh, and we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. He actually was the um, uh, Melbourne World Cup champion, where his score um, in that meet uh, would have gotten him, I believe it was a silver medal uh, in, uh, in Rio. So just, uh, just another interesting interesting point uh, point there um, and of course our wrestling team uh, you know ranked uh, second in the country had just finished up big tens uh, at Rutgers and had five uh, five guys 
uh, headed to uh, he headed to NCAs uh, in in Minneapolis. Uh, there's that uh, that beautiful Big Ten uh, hockey trophy uh, that Coach Kadowski and the guys had uh, had earned, um, and uh, one of their last times uh, in in Pagula. Uh, and uh, there's Mark Hall, uh, one of our Big Ten champions, who was headed to Minneapolis uh, in NCAs in, in hope of. Uh, of another NCA, both team and uh, an individual title, and then into the spring, uh, you know, certainly uh, preseason number one, uh, men's lacrosse uh, was was having a great season and had uh, high hopes there. These are our three indoor um, uh, track qualifiers uh, who were in New Mexico getting ready to uh, getting ready to compete in Danae Rivers, uh, Maddie Holmberg, and uh, David Lucas. Uh, and then here's a look, you know, you want to talk about comprehensive excellence. Uh, here's a look at, uh, at, at where our teams were uh, from a nationally ranked standpoint as we finished, we're finishing up the winter um, and headed into, uh, headed into our spring sports. Uh, no, no conversation about Penn State athletics is complete uh, without talking about, uh, talking about our academics. Uh, record tying 3.17 overall GPA. Uh, in the in the fall, another record 52 student athletes who were 4.0, 280 who are on the dean's list, which is 3.5 and above. Um, and here's the one I love: 28 of our teams uh, with a 3.0 or better. So 28 of our 31 had team averages of 2.0 uh, or better. And then uh, and then kind of I call it the pièce de la résistance here, and that's that 91 percent. Um, NCA graduation success uh, rate, which is a Penn State record. We tied the previous record uh, each of the two previous years at 90%. Um, and then this last year, we're able to break through um, at 91%. And then the other uh, kind of uh, uh, piece of, of what we do, the academics and the athletics, and that's kind of the, the community service, or as I like to put it, the servant hearts. Um, of our student athletes and of our athletic program. And this is men's gymnastics, um, having won the, uh, the pep rally, the athlete hour pep rally um, at THON this year. Uh, our student athlete advisory board uh, finished fifth uh, in terms of dollars raised across campus organizations. Um, so as all great Penn Staters know, uh, Penn State athletics certainly um, is uh, heavily involved and, and, and loves THON uh, weekend and our opportunity to, uh, to serve to serve others there, so let me just uh, let me just talk you through. Um, uh, that's kind of where we were uh, from an athletic standpoint, but let me talk you through the days uh, leading up to, uh, to 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 the cancellation um, by both the Big Ten and the NCAA of the remainder of winter and, and, and fall sports. Ironically enough, I was uh, supposed to take a trip to China uh, and Vietnam uh, with Nike in, uh, in mid-February. Uh, obviously that, that got canceled and uh, I was, uh, was grateful uh, not, to, not to be making that trip. But as we, as we headed into, uh, into March, I did head to Indianapolis for uh, the Women's Basketball uh, Championship on the, uh, on the fourth. Uh, you could tell by then, you know, the airport were, were starting to change uh, tenor a little bit. I did hop in my car on March 8th uh, and drive to Rutgers for the uh, Sunday for the championships uh, in, uh, in wrestling for, uh, for the Big Ten. Uh, and then was scheduled to go to Indianapolis on the 11th for both the Big Ten meeting uh, and, uh, and the start of the men's basketball tournament on the 12th. Ended up staying back in, uh, in State College because there were lots of conversations at the university leadership level uh, about uh, how we might be as a university, how we might be handling this, uh, and then ended up first thing on uh, the morning of the 12th, first thing Thursday morning, leaving to fly to Indianapolis to meet up with our men's basketball team. Uh, went straight from the airport, took a cab to, uh, uh, to the arena where our team was uh, having their uh, pregame shoot around got on the bus uh, to head back to the hotel with them. And that's where I got a text from, uh, from the Big Ten commissioner. And uh, we, had a, we had a call scheduled in like 15 or, or 20 minutes. And uh, that's where we knew that the, uh, the Big Ten tournament, men's basketball tournament, would be canceled. Uh, we were starting to get an inkling of uh, what was going on uh, from an NCA standpoint. I went uh, back downstairs. Uh, Coach Chambers was, uh, was telling the guys. 
Um, obviously, that was really difficult, but at that point in time, uh, we thought that uh, there still might be a chance uh, of delay, uh, perhaps, for, for the NCAA tournament. Um, but we did jump on our charter, head back home uh, a couple of hours later, uh, and unfortunately, um, the NCAA, while we, were, while we were in the air, made their decision um, to, uh, to cancel all the remaining winter and, uh, and spring sports championships. So that was, uh, you know, that was a really, really difficult time. Again, I've, I've already said it. We know this is bigger than sport, um, but sometimes in the moment, um, that's, uh, that's really hard to, uh, to feel. And, you know, our, our fencers and indoor track kids and, and hockey and wrestling and, uh, and, and basketball and, and all of those that were on the precipice of, of championship moments and championship opportunities. Um, I know that was really, really hard uh, for them and, and, uh, and our hearts uh, really ached. Uh, and, and continue to for, for those, for those lost, lost opportunities. Um, so, you know, at that point, uh, came back to State College. We were in the office uh, for, uh, for a couple of days. Um, and then obviously Governor Wolf uh, made his uh, proclamation, started to make his proclamations about, uh, about stay at home uh, kinds, of, uh, kinds of efforts. And uh, so we just, uh, you know, we continued to focus on students. Uh, and continued to, uh, to focus on uh, how we could support them uh, remotely uh, in a new environment. So whether that's our Morgan Center and academic support or health and welfare from a sports med standpoint or, or fitness, uh, maintaining fitness levels uh, through our, our performance teams, uh, mental health, student development, you name it, all of our, uh, our folks are, uh, are continuing to do that and continuing to, uh, to serve students. Um, but certainly, you know, it's our it's our seniors um, that uh, that we uh, that our hearts uh, our hearts do ache uh, for them. Um, you know, uh, Lamar Lamar Stevens was literally a handful of points away from being uh, the historic uh, scoring leader for uh, for Penn State. He was going to lead his team um, to uh, to their first NCAA's in almost uh, almost a decade. Uh, but uh, you know, a lot of the media are doing really cool things. Uh, this is uh, this is senior night um, that uh, that ESPN is uh, is doing, and Lamar's opportunity uh, there. Uh, certainly, some of our teams did have an opportunity to have senior night, and thank you their their seniors. Uh, most of our uh, winter sports uh, did have that opportunity. Obviously, our uh, our spring sports uh, did not. Um, that's uh, that's our field hockey program and and their seniors back in uh, back in November uh, men's men's soccer and uh, and their senior light don't worry that's the entire team with their seniors not all those guys are are graduating uh, women's uh, women's gymnastics there uh, men's men's volleyball um, you name it, and then uh, we we have gone ahead and and done some of the uh, uh, the campus wide annual awards. Uh, these are uh, our um, McCoy and uh, Oswald Award winners. Um, Kaylee Real from women's soccer, Grant Amit from men's lacrosse, or the the McCoy, and uh, and then Brett Gilligan is our uh, is our Oswald winner. Uh, for, for the year. We also coincidentally just had uh, Student Athlete Day, um, which gave me the opportunity, um, a, a more formal opportunity to, to thank our student athletes. And um, I'll tell you, through this time, they have really shown their, their character and uh, have just been tremendous and uh, uh, really appreciate uh, their, uh, their resilience. Obviously, things like uh, the spring game, uh, have been uh, ha have been canceled. I'm sure I'll get some questions about how we'll uh, how we'll reintroduce football back in the back into our, our community. But uh, obviously that's a, that's a huge thing for our community and a big a big miss there. You know, another one was we were scheduled to uh, to host the uh, 2020 uh, USA Team USA uh, Olympic wrestling trials. Uh, well, uh, so th that uh, that didn't happen um, uh, here in April. Um, but frankly, uh, the uh, the U.S. Olympic Committee uh, and the International Olympic Committee, excuse me, um, did make the decision to postpone the Tokyo Olympics to 2021. Um, and I don't think the dates have been announced, but we will have the opportunity to uh, to host the uh, the wrestling trials uh, again uh, as in the lead up to uh, the Olympic Games in 2021. So. Uh, 
you know, there are, there are clearly uh, financial realities to, to all of this uh, for us, but I'll be really honest, uh, we'll deal with those and, and, and certainly we have to be smart about it and we have to have plans, but we're focusing on our students, uh, we're focusing on our people, uh, our people within Penn State Athletics, what we like to refer to uh, as our one team. Um, and we're focusing on our community and, and keeping everyone engaged and, and maybe uh, having a little bright moment in the, in the day to uh, uh, have an opportunity to go back and, and watch a, uh, uh, a historic moment in, uh, in Penn State Athletics. I know um, I had a lot of fun watching uh, the uh, 2018, I think it was, uh, NCAA uh, wrestling championships and watching uh, Bo Nickel uh, pin the, uh, the guy from Ohio State and, and win the championship. That was, uh, was kind of cool. So uh, we're, uh, we just keep, uh, keep moving forward and, and I keep telling our team and I'll make the same promise promises uh, to our, our, our community is that we're going to do the right things. We're going to do uh, the very, very best thing we can with the information we have at, at the time. Obviously, uh, there's a challenge around, uh, around the unknown, uh, around uncertainty, um, but we're going to base all our decisions on what we know um, at the time. Uh, we'll tell you what we know. Uh, we'll tell you what we don't know, and we'll tell you when we think we might uh, we might have have answers for you. Um, and I also know that uh, uh, that as small as sport is in this, and 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 I absolutely believe this. This is this is all going to be guided by uh, medical advice and and public health best standards. And uh, but that that sport will be part of. Uh, when we, when we as a re, as a community, uh, when we return, uh, we would be very proud and honored uh, to be a part of of creating the platform uh, for our community to gather again and and rejoice in being with each other and and celebrate all that that is Penn State. So, uh, Paul, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk a little bit about obviously something that that I love and I know many of you all do uh, as well and. Uh, Happy to uh, happy to take questions from uh, from uh, great Penn Staters. Absolutely. Well, Sandy, thank you for joining us. We do have a couple of questions. I, I want to start where um, where you were kind of towards at the end of your uh, presentation there, where you were talking about um, the senior days that that were able to occur. You know, the alumni association is a proud sponsor of all the senior days across intercollegiate athletics. Um, but talk a little bit about that, that class of 2020 and kind of their seasons interrupted, right? I mean, it's one thing for your season to come to an end in a way that you didn't plan, but it, but it ends on the field, right? Um, how, are, how are coaches working with some of those student athletes from, a, um, from the, the mental aspect of all this? I know that you guys invest a lot in uh, helping our student athletes with, with the sports psychology of all this, but talk a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes that our, our, our fans may not know about. Yeah, Paul, I think it's a great point. Uh, you know, I've said to a number of our coaches and I've said to a number of folks who I've engaged in conversations with, you know, those, those eight or nine years that I coached, um, the most depressed I've ever been is, is when the season is over. Um, and, you know, sometimes you knew it was coming. Sometimes you said, sometimes you, you don't based on the results on the, on the field. So, you know, it's always a difficult moment, um, but to have it, have it happen so unexpectedly. Um, and, and every student's different. Every program is different. A couple of our winter sports actually were done their seasons, uh, their seasons were, were over. Um, but it, you know, it's, it's different, uh, by person. And you think about our wrestlers who were, you know, those five individuals who, uh, not only did the team have aspirations of a national championship, but those five individuals obviously, uh, did as well. You think about, uh, you think about our ice hockey team, uh, men's hockey and you know they're getting ready to host the semifinals of the Big Ten tournament um, they're they're ranked uh, I believe it was seventh at the time and you know they they feel like and and I think we all share that with them that they had a legitimate chance to to, to really uh, take the chance not only take the Big Ten championship but to take the NCAA championship so um, you know every every one of them is different you know our three uh, our three indoor track kids literally were already in um, 
Las Cruces, uh, New Mexico. Uh, and I had to call John Gondak uh, on Thursday. They were getting ready to start on Friday morning. I called him before we took off from Indianapolis and said, hey, John, I don't know what the answer is going to be. I don't know what the decision is going to be, but here's what's possible. Um, and, and they literally canceled that championship uh, with all of the competitors sitting sitting right there uh, uh, in in the in the locale of the of the championship, um, so it's different. Uh, it's different person by person. It's different team by team. Um, but I, I got to tell you, Paul, our coaches have been absolutely phenomenal, um, and uh, they've been uh, they, they've really been taking care of these young men and women, uh, both academically and, and, uh, uh, and, um, and athletically. I did just see a note, and you're absolutely right. I, uh, I messed that up. It was six wrestlers. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate the uh, correction. I, I don't know which one of them I left out. Uh, but um, we've also, as you, as you uh, indicated, we've invested heavily from both a mental health standpoint and a performance or, or, or sports psychology uh, standpoint. And um, uh, uh, Carl Olson, uh, our, our, uh, our unit there is led by Carl Olson. He's done some tremendous work uh, with our coaches, with our staff, and then most prominently uh, with, with students to kind of to help, to help, help them through that. Um, and then the last part I think of, of your question to do it justice is we can't do it now, although we've been doing a lot of things in social media, and, uh, but we're, we're going to do some things around not only the virtual graduation that the university will have on, uh, on May 9th, uh, but uh, but also when we do have the opportunity to have an in-person, not all of them will be able to come back, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll do things to not only celebrate them, but but celebrate our teams as well. And, and then the, the, just the last piece there, um, and I'll probably get some questions about, about this, is the spring sports seniors have been extended another year, year of eligibility, and we've got about 25 of them that are coming back. Um, so they'll have an opportunity to, uh, to, to wear the blue and white again um, and, uh, and have, kind of a, have kind of a mulligan there. Let, let's stick with that one for, for just a second. Talk through some of the logistics on that when a student athlete is granted an extra year from a, from a scholarship perspective. How do, you, how do you handle that um, in intercollegiate athletics when you may have committed some of those scholarship dollar, dollars to other athletes coming in behind them? Yeah, so that, that you've pointed out actually probably uh, the, the biggest complication, but that's, that's all it is. It's just a complication. Um, and, and the NCA helped us work around that based on um, those that are coming back, those that would have exhausted their eligibility in spring of 2020, their scholarships do not count in our limitations in the spring of 21. So they lifted the cap just for those students for us. And, um, and, and so that, that, that helped there, but there's no doubt. I mean, you've got juniors maybe that weren't playing or weren't playing as much as they wanted to, but knew they'd have more playing time next year because so-and-so was going to be gone. Or you've got a freshman coming in who knows that his or her position was a senior um, and that, you know, and so it certainly changes that dynamic. Um, but the fact of the matter is it's the right thing to do um, to give uh, those young and you know, young men and young women uh, the opportunity to have a full season. Uh, there'll be a financial impact to us about $700,000. We've got about 25 uh uh, scholarship students that are, that are coming back, um, but it's the right thing to do. And, and so we, did, we didn't hesitate. Absolutely. Sandy, I know you've been an administrator for, for a while, but you always have that, that coach's mindset where you're always looking at what's next, right? What are, what are the milestones that we need to hit? So kind of what are the top three or four priorities over the next 60 to 90 days? And what are some of those milestones that you continue to drive towards and continue to drive your team towards? Yeah, well, the, the, the first one, and it's been, it's been top of mind, it's, uh, it, it's been kind of the laser focus from minute one, and that's health, safety, and welfare 
um, of our students. Uh, you know, do we, uh, we're, we're switching to remote learning, re remote teaching, remote learning. Um, you know, how many of our students are still in the dorms? How many of our students are still in the community? How many of our students uh, are, are away from campus? And frankly, where are they? Uh, you know, we needed to know, uh, we needed to know exactly, uh, exactly where they were. Uh, and, and so that, that will be uh, a number one priority for however long we do this. Um, and then frankly, when we're not doing this anymore, it'll be a one priority uh, when we're back on, on campus. So that's easy. That's, uh, that, that's number one. Uh, and, uh, and then secondly, are our, our people. Uh, you know, the, our, our one team, uh, we're going through all kinds of, uh, uh, of uh, changes as it relates to how our work gets done, people that are, are working uh, remotely. We do, we do have some folks uh, that are working on campus uh, as, uh, uh, you know, as considered uh, essential, uh, essential personnel and essential uh, assignments. Uh, that's very few, uh, but, but we do have some, and, and obviously we need to make sure that, that they are self, safe and, and safe environments and, uh, and, and healthy. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and then thirdly, uh, I would say continuing to engage with our community. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're not, we're not competing uh, right now, uh, but we still, there are, there are ways for our community, uh, for us to engage with our community, our coaches, our student athletes, uh, administrators, staff, uh, you name it. Um, and we've seen lots of the creativity uh, coming out uh, in, in, in those ways. Uh, and, uh, and I would say the last one, uh, but again, they're all important, uh, would be where, where we stand financially and, and how we might assess. Uh, so we, we spent uh, a, a good couple of weeks um, assessing our uh, fiscal year 20 uh, position uh, based on some lost revenue and uh, and and based on some reduced expenses as well um, and we've got a good a good handle on that um, and then obviously where we think we might be uh, 2021 um, and then so those are those are kind of all in the hopper right now uh, and and then we've also spent some time looking at some of the uh, out decisions how we might frame return to campus how we might frame return to play uh, how we might frame return to work. Um, and, and certainly we're dealing with unknowns there, uh, but, but you can put a framework around it. Yeah, so a lot of questions coming in revolving around football, and, and I, wanna, I wanna sequence these, but before I get to the football question specifically, we know the Morgan Academic Center is, provides world-class service to our student athletes in terms of academic advising and making sure that they're progressing towards graduation. You talked about the 91% graduation rate. But talk about how they've had to shift a little bit from from face to face interactions to now this remote environment and and how well they handled all of that. Well, I'll start with the with the last part of your question. I mean, they've been spectacular. Uh, you know, they there was a uh, a time period where we did have um, uh, we still had a number of students. It was never a large number, but it was probably between 60 and 70, um, both uh, on campus and, and in the community who were receiving um, academic advising and academic support physically in the Morgan Academic Center. Um, they, uh, they limited the number and they had hours and, and those kinds of things. Um, but, then it, but then it did shift completely remotely um, at, uh, at some point. And um, they've been spectacular. You know, our, our, uh, our advisors have been tremendous in, in keeping track of and keeping up with, uh, with students. Um, I have, they have uh, uh, told me, and, and this is, um, I think this is uh, pretty consistent across the board, uh, that things are taking about 50% longer um, than they do when a student walks in and sits down across the desk from you. Uh, and, uh, and so it is a more intense, um, uh, time commitment, uh, but again, that's uh, they love what they do. They're they're committed to our students, um, and they'll and, and even in normal times, they'll do whatever it takes uh, to help them. Um, and that certainly is uh, is what exists now. So, um, so blue white weekend coming up in just a couple days, right? Obviously, isn't going to happen because of everything going on. Um, Talk through a little bit about uh, football preparation and what it takes to get a football team ready for, um, for fall competition, um, starting from kind of where the, the plug was pulled 
um, and, and kind of you know, moving forward from there? And how have the coaches kept the student athletes engaged? Yeah, so uh, I think probably the most important thing is uh, anyone who, who, follows this, who follows college football closely knows that that winter conditioning, you know, that January, February, first part of March up until typically about spring break is really, really important. For, uh, for a college football team in terms of building strength, gaining weight, lean muscle mass, fitness, uh, uh, whatever the particular need um, of that student athlete is. And, uh, you know, we've got the best in the business in, uh, in Dwight Galt. He does, a, he does a tremendous, tremendous job uh, with our guys. And, uh, you know, as we headed into uh, what was going to be spring break and, and then ultimately the beginning of spring ball, uh, coming back out of spring break, our, our guys, you know, all the reports were that our guys were, uh, were in tremendous, tremendous shape. So uh, you, you typically would head out of uh, winter workouts into spring ball and then your, your summer conditioning program. So, um, you know, I'm certainly not going to speculate about when, <laughs> you know, when we're, when we're going gonna to get back um, because we don't, we just don't know, obviously. But it's going to, uh, it's going to take some time. I mean, our guys are uh, there, they, they've been sent to program. Um, some of them have uh, gyms in their homes that uh, are, you know, some level of gym in their home that they have access to. Some of our guys don't, they, you know, they've been sent uh, bands and, uh, and, and, uh, and a few things to do, do just a little bit of uh, isometric or, or resistance training. So uh, when we do have the opportunity to come back, there is going to be some uh, uh, number of, of weeks where, where they've got to get that fitness level back. Now, again, we're talking about 18 to 22 year olds. Right. Um, you know, this isn't, we're not talking about you and me, Paul, that, you know, that would take months, years, maybe decades in my, in my case, but, um, we, you know, we need a couple of weeks from a fitness standpoint, and then you go into what would be considered kind of a typical camp, uh, preseason camp where it would be more the football, the actual football piece and the, the, physical, the physical contact. So, you know, we've used, uh, we've used the 60 days. Um, you know, that was a couple of weeks ago. I think we've refined that uh, a, a little bit. I think we can probably do it uh, in, about, uh, in about 45. Um, but uh, it, it's, you know, we're, we're, still, we're still refining that. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll figure out how to make it work whenever the time is right. Yeah, you know, Sandy, I think one of the things that um, people don't understand about this is that w when, when a decision is made, it's not a Sandy Barber decision or even a Penn State decision, right? Uh, it may not even be a Big Ten decision, right? It's an, it's an NCAA decision, right? Other teams have to be willing to play us, right? So it happens at a different level. So can you talk through a little bit about um, and I'm not asking you to speculate, but um, when it comes time to make that decision, how the decision will be made in terms of full season, partial season, no season? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I will say this, Paul. Um, there, there are um, emotional, morale, community uh, reasons uh, for, for us to have sport, right? right? And, uh, and certainly uh, college football, especially in communities like ours, um, is probably at the very, very top of, of that list. Um, and, and of course, uh, it could go without saying, but it shouldn't, that would be disingenuous. There's the financial piece. Sure. of that as well, uh, and, and particularly the financial piece to, to our department. All 31 of our programs uh, in some way, shape, or form depend on uh, the revenue produced by, uh, by our, afforded us by our, by our football program. Um, but uh, th this one gets really complicated um, because the NCAA certainly is going to insert itself from what it considers to be a public health or safety and, and welfare standpoint. Um, but ultimately, um, there are going to have to be independent decisions made on each campus. Um, now, as you said, that decision may get taken out of the hands of 
Dr. Barron or our board of trustees because Governor Wolf says it's this, well, you know, wh wh whatever, whatever it is. Uh, and, uh, and that's what's going to get complicated uh, about returning to, to football if this thing gets too close to the start of, of the season. And uh, I serve on the NCAA uh, Football Oversight Committee. Um, which uh, has started to get more and more involved um, in these kinds of conversations. Uh, and, you know, I do think it's going to be uh, difficult that if, if we wait to say, okay, all 50 states are clear and are at this point, or, you know, again, now that could, that could happen in June. And, and, and we're, you know, we're not talking about that budding up against the end of the season. Um, but we're, we're going to have to be willing to say at some point we've hit enough of a critical mass or a sweet spot um, that we're going to need to go. You know, otherwise, um, we, we, might, we, might not, uh, we might not have a full season. Uh, who, who knows? Uh, having said that, there are all kinds of ideas out there about, having a full season from September to December, if we can. If not, do you shift it? If not, do you move it to the spring? Uh, you know, uh, people's creative juices are, are uh, giving a chance, have, having a chance to grow during all this. <laughs> well, I, I think in the face of crisis and challenge, right, innovation flourishes, right? So there's, there's no surprise that there's not an abundance of ideas of, of what if scenarios. And so, um, I, I know that the, the best minds among us will come together and determine what the, what the safest, uh, most viable outcome for, for all of this would be. But you make a great point about um, sports place within our community and within our um, you know, community like large C, right? And, and, and family and, and just uh, how it brings people together. And so when, when this is all over, we are gonna need something to bring us all together, right? Um, we have we're, just a, we're, we're raising our hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have just a couple minutes uh, left, Sandy, and um, just a just a couple quick hitters here. Uh, you know, one of the things I love about the Big Ten is our commitment to having um, the greatest number of student athletes being able to participate. Right? It's why you have thirty-one sports versus some other conferences that sponsor sponsor sixteen sports. Um, knowing we're already at the upper end of um, sports offerings uh, in inter intercollegiate athletics, have, have you put any thought to uh, adding additional sports? You see the, the growth of women's wrestling, for example, or, um, or crew and rowing, or, or other sports on the horizon for Penn State? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think we're always um, got our eyes open as to what's going to benefit in, in that particular case, our student body, right. uh, what's, what's gonna meet their, their needs um, and interests. Um, but to be honest with you, and you've already alluded to this, at 31, uh, we're the second largest uh, in the Big Ten. And um, I believe we're the third largest public uh, in the country in terms of, of offerings of, of sports. So, um, you know, everybody's got financial challenges. Um, you, you've talked about it. I mean, there are places like Texas, uh, who's uh, got the, uh, produces the most revenue as an athletic department. Um, and they, they spread that revenue over 20 sports. Right. And about 480 student athletes. Uh, we spread about 40 million, 30 or 40 million less, um, over 800 plus stu student athletes. And so we never want to, number one, we don't want to do anything that's going to disadvantage um, our current student athletes. And we also don't want to, uh, to add opportunities um, that we can't do right. Uh, so that that would be the circumstance under which uh, under which we would we would do that. Um, but it's it's not something that we're completely closed off to. Uh, we, we continue to to look at opportunities and, and kind of assess them. Um, but to be honest with you, uh, with the general principle being we want to do what what we have, we want to take care of and take care of better and continue to improve uh, the conditions for success for what we have. 
um, it, it's going to be a real unusual opportunity um, for, for us to actually undertake that. Yeah. Two more questions here before we wrap up, Sandy. First one, um, without getting into any kind of health or medical specifics, a lot of people are wondering how are the athletes and staff members in terms of contracting coronavirus? Has it had an impact on uh, Penn State intercollegiate athletics? Yeah, we've, uh, you know, our, um, uh, our medical staff has done a great job. Uh, they are, uh, they are actually the one, um, they are, I shouldn't say the one, one of our staffs, uh, that does continue to, uh, have our training room open. It's very limited hours and it's only one of our five or six or, or seven, um, for students who are in the area. One of the criteria for those that were allowed to stay was if they had a, a rehab a rehabilitation, if they were in the middle of a rehabilitation um, that did require uh, medical needs. Um, that's a very small number, a uh, very small single digit uh, number. So they have continued to uh, uh, to attend to, to those needs. Um, uh, we have had, uh, you know, some number of, uh, of student athletes tested, um, but, uh, you know, they've gotten the medical, the kind of medical attention, uh, that they need, whether, whether it be testing or, or, or otherwise. Um, and I would say, you know, obviously, uh, knock on, knock on wood, um, both, uh, students and staff have, uh, have remained pretty healthy. Great. So final question, you have a community of enthusiastic alumni and fans gathered here today with you on, on Zoom. Um, what can they do to help? If you if you have the opportunity to say, you know, um, go do this uh, and that'll help intercollegiate athletics or help Penn State at this time, what would what would you ask Penn Staters to do right now? Well, the number one thing I would ask them to do is uh, is tell tell our student athletes and particularly our seniors how much they love them and how much they appreciate them and whether it's social media or or uh, you, you name it, or, you know, send a, uh, we, we, we're still getting mail uh, to the athletic department. So uh, send a note and we'll make sure that, that uh, either you're the particular team you want to get the message or, or your student athletes. That just means so much uh, to, uh, to, to our students and, and to our teams and, and frankly to all of us, uh, you know, that's, um, our community and our fans are, are what we're missing the most. Uh, and uh, uh, it, so I would say uh, just, uh, uh, just, just let our student athletes know how much they're appreciated, how much their efforts, uh, you know, they've had to turn on a dime and, uh, and they're now having to, you know, make sure that, that, that they understand and, and know how to, how to learn remotely and study remotely and, uh, and, and, uh, and study in a house full, house full of brothers and sisters maybe, or, or, uh, or, or who knows. Uh, and, uh, so I, I would say that's, uh, that's the number one, uh, the absolute number one thing, um, you know, continue to support us in all the ways that you always have, uh, whether it's, uh, buying tickets or, or merchandise or, you know, sporting your Penn State gear in, uh, in your, in your Zoom, uh, uh, you know, in your Zoom activities or, uh, and, or, or, you know, if you're in position to, uh, through, there you go, there you go, through, uh, uh, through donations and supporting the Nittany Lion Club, uh, we will be back. Uh, we will be, we'll be all, we'll be doing this live. Um, I don't think it'll be before we know it, but uh, it'll, it, it will happen. Um, and we're going to, we're going to need your help when we get back. So Sandy, uh, I just want you to know how grateful we are at the Penn State Alumni Association for all you do for Penn State. And for every time that I email you or, or send you a text message, the answer is always yes. And, and I can't tell you how grateful we are to just have you be so engaged with our community and uh, to help spread the good news of Penn State and of uh, intercollegiate athletics. And so we're grateful for all you do and we're grateful that you joined us today. That's all the time we have. I'd like to thank Sandy Barber for joining us and thank you who have tuned in today for the virtual speaker series. Next week, we'll be speaking with Jessica Mattingly, who is a child and adolescent psychologist in the Department of Psychology and Behavioral Health. She'll discuss how you can start the conversation about COVID-19 with your children, uh, what to discuss, and how to maintain an open line of communications with your children. Sign up for this event. It is free, and we'll share the registration link on our social media channels next week. Until then, 
stay safe, stay healthy, and we are Penn State. Thanks, Andy. Really appreciate yep, thanks, it. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate the partnership. I appreciate you. All right. Uh, have a good meeting.